Good morning, or oh, excuse me, good afternoon. It's 12.31 p.m. my time here. The common denominator. What is the common denominator between us all? You might say, well, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Well, yes, that is true. We're all sinners. But are you hiding yourself in the umbrella that all have sinned and rather neglecting the few, you know, your own personal accountability to your sins that put the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on the cross? Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. Or... The common denominator that if you cut me, I cut you, what colors are blood going to be? It's going to be red, right? That's true, but nah, that's not the common denominator uh, that we're going to be looking at today. Is it faith? Hmm. Hardly do, do, do all people have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, truly have faith on our true Lord, God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Usually it's a God of their own making, right? But what is the common denominator? You're going to die. I'm going to die. Yes, my dear friends, death. <laughs> we surely all have that in common, do we not? This video is going to be a video about that. Death. What it means unto we of the Church of the Living God and what it means unto you, who are not saved, you know, not converted, thank you, Brother Alexander Hartley. <laughs> We're all going to die. You're going to die. I'm going to die. And when you look into the scriptures... The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, has quite a bit, a lot to say about death. Now, <clears throat> very quickly, you parents who may have um, your little children listening to this, and I know for certain that there are those out there who who allow their children, of course, to listen to these videos. This is something that you don't want to subject your children to at this present time. Then, um, of course, you listen to it. Keep this in your mind. Because we're all going to die. We're all going to die. But what do we do with that? Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. <coughs> now, the book of Ecclesiastes, which was written by King Solomon. Okay, give me a break. You can look, kind of liken... The book of Ecclesiastes, if you will, maybe, perhaps, as Solomon's personal diary of a way. You could kind of argue that. But you got to remember, King Solomon had it all. He had true riches, true fame, true possessions. He had it all. But the overall theme of Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanity, said the preacher. All is vanity and vexation of spirit.
And we learn in Ecclesiastes that this is probably most likely written towards the latter part of his life. Okay? But now let's go to, like I said, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. We will be reading verses 1 unto verse 11. Follow me along. You are expected to. Okay? <clears throat> we begin. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 1 unto verse 11. Who is as the wise man? Very quickly. What is wisdom? And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, verse 28. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. What wisdom is in you? The wisdom of men? Earthly, sensual, devilish? Or the fear of the Lord, which is wisdom. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. He that made the eye shall not he see. He who made the ear shall not he hear. He who giveth to men understanding shall not he know. Just paraphrase that, beg your pardon. Let's continue. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Where the word of a king is, there is power. <clears throat> hmm. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? What do you think you're going to do to the Lord? Huh? Think you're going to prevent that which is inevitable? Whoso keepeth the commandment <clears throat> shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is a time and judgment. <clears throat> Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not which uh, which for he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All you coadjutors, infiltrators, you fakes. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Those of you that preach and believe in a false gospel, another Christ, okay? Your religion of flesh. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Your fleshly religion is not going to deliver you. <clears throat> All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy. The wicked buried, <clears throat> who had come and gone from the place of the holy. And there, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Oh, God won't see us. He's not going to notice this. Where's your God bringing all this judgment? 
<laughs> you wait, boy. You wait. Now go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 1 and verse 12. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. It's not so easy to discern those who are before you, is it? Some it is. Some are glaring. But others it takes time, right? We know this. Okay? We know this. Like I said, some out there are like, Whoop! obviously, Ray Charles could see that they are not of the Church of the Living God. Ray Charles could see that their gospel and their Christ that they preach are not in accordance with the scriptures. But some are a little bit more slick, right? Let's continue. <clears throat> all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. Look over at verse 8 in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given, given to it. Verse 3 in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. For him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. A lion that roars, right? And a dog whimpers. Dog also barks. <laughs> but look at that. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. While you still have breath, while you still draw breath, there is hope that you may be saved and converted and become of the church of the living God. Okay, there is still hope. Granted, now with men, this is impossible, but not with God, remember. With God, all things are possible. While you're still breathing, you still got there's still a chance that you could get saved and get caught up with the church of the living God before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because what is coming very soon, dear friend, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be littered with death. Littered with death. Verse 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. When you're dead, it's too late for you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and godly sorrow. When you're dead and you are of the church of the living God, you're going to go be with the Lord. See. For the living know that they shall die. Everybody knows we're going to die. <clears throat> but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Verse 6. Also their love and their hatred... And their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Why do you think these heretics like Osteen and all these prosperity people, 
Why do you think they're so big on press, uh, pushing your best life now? Because those guys are devils, and this is their best life now. Verse 7. Now let's read verse 6 again. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Verse 7. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and li let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. <clears throat> Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Once you're dead, it's too late. When you die, if you are of the church of the living God, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Don't worry, we're going to look at that, okay? But if you are not saved of the church of the living God, you're going to hell. You're going to hell without the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You're going to hell, and you're going to burn, okay? There's none of this, what, you, what, you think you're going to be lying in a grave as a worm food? Huh? Huh, you think that's it? Only a fool, and a fool says in his heart that there is no God. Only a fool believes that. Or reincarnation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not worm food, right? But you come back as something else. Anything but to get to the realities of heaven or hell. Where are you going to be? <clears throat> Verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not his time. As the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in, a, in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when it falleth suddenly upon them. And look what's happening outside your door right now. You, you have noticed, of course, right? Absolutely you have. But now, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. What is wind? Air. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, or how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall, not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. <clears throat> but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Now look at this. 
Now, you might be, thus far what we read, you might be thinking, well, that that gives us, what you're reading there, Brad, kind of gives us an excuse to go ahead and eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die, right? Mm, keep reading. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes, all flesh. But know thou, but know thou, for that, that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. But know thou, verse 9, but know thou, that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Now let's read the final discourse here. In Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Talking about old age. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, keepers of the house, trembling, you know, feebleness in old age, okay? And the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders, grinders, your teeth, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, diminishing eyesight, the older you get. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, losing, uh, going a little deaf, are you? <laughs> Hi. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, getting up very early, very, very early. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Again, referencing to losing your hearing. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed, and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Have, have you ever gotten involved in a two, three hour study of scripture? It's a weariness of the flesh, isn't it? Your flesh wants to go get something to eat. Your flesh wants something to drink, right? Your flesh wants to get up and move around, right? Verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, 
for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Judgment. Now we got to remember dispensationally, doctrinally, this was written on to the Jewish people. This is instruction in righteousness if there ever was any. Okay? But we have to remember dispensationally, under the law, doctrinally, for the Jewish people, under the law, okay? Applies for them, but for us today, instruction and righteousness, it's right here, okay? And good verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Judgment. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 unto verse 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, the book of Hebrews is specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The book of Hebrews for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is the dispensation that comes at the end after the time of the Gentiles. This dispensation ends. And this dispensation ends with the catching away, the resurrection. Falsely called the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? It's the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Book of Hebrews is written specifically for the Jews during that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble. But you can't escape this, dear friend. Verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. See, that's what a lot of you who are not saved and those of you who are false, that's the one thing you want to skirt, isn't it? Judgment. God is a God of judgment. You are going to be judged. And you and I of the Church of the Living God, we need to judge ourselves. How do you judge yourself? The scriptures. Okay? But see, again, you're not going to get away from that. And you you could be sitting there saying, well, I don't believe in the scriptures. I don't believe in your God. That doesn't make a hill's bean, hill of beans worth a difference, dear friend. That don't matter. You're going to face judgment when you die. Go to Romans. Chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1-4 The definition of the gospel 
for today in this dispensation of the time of the Gentiles. You're not going to get away from it, dear friend. We're all going to die. There's no discharge from that war. But as we have read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 on to verse 16. Oh, excuse me. Uh, verses 10 on to verse 13. Excuse me. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 on to verse 13. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is where we of the church of the living God are going to have our works tried for our rewards at salvation. We're going to get onto that, okay? Not everybody where he says, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The we is referring to the church of the living God. This is written for the church of the living God. Okay? The book of Romans, the Pauline epistles, is for the church of the living God for today in this dispensation of the time of the Gentiles. The we there is referring on to the church of the living God. Okay? And if you are of the church of the living God, saved and converted, thank you very much, Brother Alexander Hartley. You're going you're gonna to stand, uh, what does it say there? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account, shall give account of himself to God. Read that again. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now, the judgment he's talking about, specifically in this chapter, is about meat and drink. That kind of stuff. You can read the whole chapter on your own, on your own time. Okay? We are to judge. Absolutely. Not hypocritically. For example, if I were watching pornography and I come to you and say, you shouldn't watch por pornography. It's a sin. God hates it. Well, I'm watching it. No, that's no, that's you don't do that. You don't do that. You first pull the moat out of your own eye. <laughs> then, you know, you can go ahead and preach to somebody about something that the Lord gave you victory over. Okay. But you read the whole context to see the whole chapter to see what he's specifically talking about. But the point is, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You and I, church of the living God. Okay? And verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now note the judgment seat of Christ. Where it says that. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Church of the living God. Those who are saved and converted. Okay? But verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We certainly, of the church of the living God, are going to give an account of, our, uh, account of ourselves to God. But so are lost. So are lost. We'll get a little bit more on that a little later. Then in verse 13 again, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block on an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now go to Philippians chapter 1, one verse. Philippians chapter 1, 
Verse 23. Okay? For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, verse 24, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Every single one of us of the church of the living God struggles, truly struggles, with verse 23. You're in a strait betwixt two. Wanting, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. You're a father. You have a son and a daughter. You're a mother. You have children. You're a husband. You have your wife and children, if the Lord gives you children. The Lord has called you to preach the word. All right? But see, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we want to go home. We want, we want out of here. We wanted out of here yesterday. Okay? Nevertheless, to do to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Every single one of you, my brothers and sisters, has something that the Lord wants you to do. Whatever it is, whatever the capacity that he has put you in. There is something that he would have you to do. And how are we doing with that? But we all want to depart and be with Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 14. No, no, verse 12. Excuse me. <laughs> 3, 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Oh, and look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And then when you go back to Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, For I am a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Verse 24, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And we, the church of the living God, we do suffer persecutions, don't we, brethren, sisters? <laughs> I Amen. Go to 1 John chapter 5. See, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we know where we're going to go when we die. We're going to go to heaven, which is where we want to be right now. But there is something, whatever it is, whatever it is the Lord has called you to do, there is a task, there is something whatever the capacity is that our Lord would have you to do. We'll go to 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 unto the end of the chapter. See, we, the Church of the Living God, wrongly referred to as Christians, by the way. We, the Church of the Living God, there's something that we know, we are assured of. 1 John 5, 9 to the close of the chapter. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, referring to the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Today, you're saved, born again, converted. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living in you. 
If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Look at that. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. You say you don't believe the scriptures? Hmm? You say you do not believe that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures? You just don't believe that? You're calling God a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. What is that record? You're looking at it right here, buddy. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. You want to know Jesus? The real Jesus Christ, God our Father? Here. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Verse 11, and this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You don't have Jesus Christ, God our Father. By grace are ye saved through faith. If you do not have trust on him and are saved, born again, converted. You're going to hell. When you die, hell awaits you. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, the thing that irritates you atheists, you fakes, we, the church of the living God, we know something. We know where we're going. We have assurance of it. Because we are sealed until the day of redemption. Sealed. And our redemption, which draweth nigh, is catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, the resurrection. We know something. Let's continue. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, okay? He heareth us, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. Oh, I'm not a sinner. You're calling God a liar. You think you're not a sinner. You're calling God a liar. <laughs> All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. <laughs> Hello! And we know that the Son of God has come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen.
And that's not just the, like a little uh, Marian crucifix statue of Mary or your favorite saint or that stupid Buddha thing. No. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Your covetousness. Yourself. Made of yourself. Your own idol have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 11. This is the confidence, the assurance that you and I, that we as the church of the living God have. Okay? This we know. We have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. We trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on ourselves. It's all on the Lord, see? This is what you lost people, you atheists, you coadjutors, you Jesuits, you fakes, you infiltrators. This is what you do not have. And it shews itself. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 on verse 11. For we know, <laughs> we know, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not not for that we not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? We're sealed. You're truly saved, born again. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Do you like it here? Do you want to stay here? We're going to look at a really good example about that a little later on. But do you, do you are you one of these people who say who, who I have heard with my own ears, like, oh, I, I, I hope, I hope. The catching away doesn't happen yet because there are things, so many things I want to do. I want to see my grandchildren have to. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, at home in the body in the flesh, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> Very quickly. Very quick. I'm sorry. Rabbit trail. Find hallelujah in the scriptures for me. Go ahead. Enough of that. Verse 9, wherefore we labor that whether we whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Everything that you do, do heartily as unto the Lord, not to man. For you and I, we are ambassadors for Christ. Don't you for one second tell me. And the people, if you buy this stuff, you really need to uh, examine yourselves. You don't sit there and try to tell me that God doesn't really care how you live your life after you're saved. That's a lie. That's a lie. Verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, 
context written on to the church of the living God. Those of us who are saved and born again. Okay? Converted. Okay? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. What did we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 12? For God will bring everything into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right? There's, see, there's no skirting judgment different. There's no skirting it. Let's continue, though. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. See, that's the thing. We, the church of the living God, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, we are, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also made manifest in your consciences. Okay? Knowing the terror of the Lord. We're going to, those of us who are saved, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? And on that, on that, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Not Peter. Which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, gold, silver, and precious stones will abide fire. Okay, I have a video addressing this, uh, which I'll probably link in this video. Okay, wood, hay, stubble. Wood burns up, hay, like a puff, stubble. Woof. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Things that abound, that abide the fire, treasures in heaven, okay, such as gold, silver, precious stones, or treasures on earth, wood, hay, stubble, things that the Lord has done through us for him. Gold, silver, precious stones, those will abide the fire. But things that we do in our own flesh, you know, for our better men for the world, wood, hay, stubble. Verse 14, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And like I said, I have a video where I covered this already, okay? Our millennial reign with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And that's not talking about purgatory. That's heresy. That's devilish, satanic nonsense. No. You're saved. Born again, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You're going to heaven. Okay? We are. You have the church of the living God, truly saved, truly born again, and even converted. <laughs> You're going to heaven. Okay? What kind of rewards are you going to get at the judgment seat of Christ? Or as I have said before, is it going to be, you're going to be up there and the Lord is going to look at you like, uh, yeah, just, just get in there, go, just go. Yeah, 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 you, you, you get to go in, but. <clears throat> See, those of us of the Church of the Living God, at the judgment seat of Christ, our works are judged for our rewards. 
our salvation is not in question because we are fully saved and born again. He cannot deny himself. We are of his bones and of his flesh. We are one with Christ. Okay? That doesn't mean we are little Christs. Okay? <laughs> no. 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 I'll probably link that video in this too. Okay? But see, our salvation is secured in Christ Jesus. Our rewards are not. <laughs> but our salvation is. Okay? That's why we're bold. That's why we have no fear of certain things. Now go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Again, Hebrews chapter 11 is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Which, the, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Got to keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus Christ. You take that mark of the beast, your instant ticket to hell has been punched. You can't take the mark of the beast. Okay? So, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 on to verse 40. And what shall I more and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, who received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may might obtain a better resurrection. Go out as a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, for our, to instruct us in righteousness, you look at the history of the Church of the Living God. It has been one wrought with persecution. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs sometime. Okay? The Church of the Living God has not had it easy-peasy. It has been very rough. Very rough, to say the very least. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is going to be the most horrific, horrific time period this world has ever or will ever see. Wrought with death, constantly. And those who are going to be claiming Jesus Christ, you know, come, you know going to be saved during that time period, going to cost you your life, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble, especially for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, see. But see, the point is, they were stoned, sawn asunder, tempted, slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. That's the history of the Church of the Living God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And right now, go now to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. See, again, we, the Church of the Living God, we know where we're going. We have not to fear death. 
Okay, we have not to fear death. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 on to verse 60. When Stephen gives the whole uh, rundown to the Sanhedrin, then he, he rebukes them in verses 51 on to verse uh, 53, okay? All right, uh, on to verse 54, okay? They gnashed on him with their teeth. They stopped their ears and gnashed on him with their teeth. And upon that, look what he did. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, who would eventually become Paul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Praying for those who were killing him. Because he knew where he was going. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. One verse. John chapter 12. Verse 24. John chapter 12 verse 24. This is something that you and I, Church of the Living God, brother, sister, we have to keep in our memory. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13, on to verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13, on to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Here's the catching away. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Very quickly, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. The resurrection. The catching away. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. And these good works are not for our salvation, for rewards. Okay? These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. But going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. See, uh, the blessed hope that we of the church of the living God are truly waiting to hear our names called is for the catching away to be resurrected. And I'll, I'll tell you, dear friend, once the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is caught up, resurrected, that is the end of this dispensation. And this dispensation is the easiest to get saved. It truly is. The hard part is you got to get over yourself. You got to get over yourself, dear friend. You can't have pride in yourself thinking that you're a good person. You got to have you got to have sorrow for what you did to the Lord that your sin put him on that cross. <laughs> Turning from yourself in godly sorrow are a requirement for your salvation. And you don't let anybody tell you otherwise. They're making you to believe in yourself. To have faith in your faith. Just like Kenyon taught, which Mary Baker Eddy taught. Which the prosperity teachers, that nut Joel Osteen with the secret, law of attraction. You know, have faith in your faith. No, you have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend. But see, see, that's why death unto us of the church of the living God is both a bitter and sweet thing. Because that brother or sister who is of the church of the living God, they die, they are absent from the body and present for the uh, uh, present with the Lord. Their pain, their suffering down here is over. They go on to their to be with the Lord. Okay? They're, they have it better than us down here. But see, we down here still mourn and are sorrowful that that person, spirit's own body, is no longer there. We just talked to them. We just saw them. We just heard their voice. We just Skyped with them. And now they're gone. We will see them again. But not yet. Not yet. And therein is the sorrow, the mourning for those of us who are alive and remain well, those who have died have gone on to be in, uh, have gone on to glory to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And sometimes it may seem that we of the Church of the Living God might be a little cold or calloused to those of you who are without. For those of you who are atheists, those of you coadjutors, fakes, infiltrators, etc., etc. It might seem a bit of coldness on our part. No. No, see. We know. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. The sorrow is on, on our part that they're not readily there present with us now. We will see them again. We will see them again. And that's the bittersweet thing of it. They are taken from us right now. But see... That's we of the Church of the Living God being eternally minded. This, dear friend, this stuff, this is temporary. It's temporary. When you got people like Osteen and all these fakes and these devils making it your best life now, that this is it. No. No. No, dear friend. No. One of two places. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. Which one is it? See, we have the church of the living God. We know we're going to go to heaven and be with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We know that. What do you know? Hmm? Hmm? 
1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 50 on to verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 on to verse 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall not all die. We shall not all sleep. Die. What does that mean? There are going to be people of the church of the living God alive when the Lord says, come up hither, catches us, catches, uh, catches us up. There are people that are going to be alive of the church of the living God when the resurrection happens. Okay? There are going to be. You know, the Jesuits and all these evil politicians, they can't kill us all off. They can't. They can't. But there are going to be those of us of the church of the living God alive when this happens. That's what that means. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That quick, boy. The catching away happens just like that. In the twinkling of an eye. Like a blink. See. See, that's why... What... <laughs> That's why you need to get saved right now. Because once that happens, this dispensation is over. Everything changes for the worse. The time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jewish people. Not for the purification of the church. That's Catholic. Okay. Verse 52 again. In a, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. I've already, no, already did a video on this too. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Uh, hold your place here. Very quickly, Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. Come on, fingers, work with me. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. He 
will swallow up death and victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? See, you and I of the Church of the Living God, we know this already. Hmm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We know that we're going to be with the Lord. The grave is not our resting place. The grave doesn't have victory over us. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I had a very uh, interesting thing happening with my cat. <laughs> but anyway, as we were saying, we of the Church of the Living God, we know, we know that when we die, the grave is not our final resting place. You know, we're not worm food. And guess what? You atheist. Neither are you. But more on this, go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We will be reading verses 28 on to verse 39. Romans 8, verses 28 on to verse 39. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are call, who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. That he might be the first more born among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. <clears throat> What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. What have we to fear, Church of the Living God? What have we to fear? Well, you don't think God's going to provide for you during these times? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Again, I say to you, look at the history of the Church of the Living God. It is one littered, marked with tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Okay? For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Because we have no fear of death. The grave doesn't scare us. See, death doesn't have its sting for those of us of the Church of the Living God. Because we know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. See, for I am persuaded that neither death, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in 
Christ Jesus, our Lord. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. Got hold upon me, excuse me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. You looking at that verse? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Guess what? You're saved, born again, of the church of the living God, you're a saint. Never mind what these satanic Catholics have done to sainthood as they call it you're saved of the church of the living god you're a saint O lord truly i am thy servant i am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid thou hast loosed my bonds i will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the lord i will pay my vows unto the lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Look at verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Go to 2 Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy. When a brother or a sister dies and goes home to be with the Lord, like I said, it's something bittersweet. They have it far more better than we do down here because they are with the Lord. That doesn't remove the, the sorrow of not having that person, spirit, soul, and body there with you present, being able to get a hold of, talk to, fellowship with, Whatever. We mourn for that. See, when they go to be with the Lord, the sorrow is on our part. With that, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 on to verse 8. Paul, facing his inevitable death. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul knew. As so do you, brother, sister. Go to Second Peter. 
Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Shimon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, sealed unto the day of redemption, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligent, diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance, oh boy, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Cannot see afar off being eternally minded. Seeing only the present. Not being eternally minded, get it? Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shewed me. John chapter 21. Go ahead and read John chapter 21 on your own time. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he, received, for he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as on to a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And very quickly, Verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, 
fall from your own steadfastness. Don't give in to this stuff. Be steadfast, unmovable. No compromise. Okay? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Paul, Peter, had their minds on eternity, eternally minded. Okay? I want to show you something very interesting. Go to 2 Kings now. Go to 2 Kings. Under a diff different dispensation, under the dispensation of the law, where eternal security was not there during the dispensation of the law. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. Okay? These people back then, during the dispensation of the law, we're not part of the body of Christ as we are today. 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 7. Second Kings chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 7. Talking about King Hezekiah. Okay? King Hezekiah. He's in heaven. Absolutely. But let's note something here. Remember how we saw that uh, being in a straight betwixt two, wanting to go be with the Lord? We want to be with the Lord? Check this out. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amaz came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall, King Hezekiah, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. He wanted to stay, rather than to go be with the Lord. Granted, at this time he would have been in Abraham's bosom, because Jesus Christ had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? He hadn't paid for the sin yet. Okay? So they were in Abraham's bosom. We're going to look at it. Oh, we're going to look at that a little later. Okay? But let's continue. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. The Lord added fifteen years unto King Hezekiah because he wept sore. Lord, don't take me yet. Don't take me yet. And in verse 6, when he says, And, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee, and I will deliver thee, and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Okay? But the point. Hezekiah didn't want to go to Abraham's bosom just yet. He wanted to stick around a little bit. And the Lord in his mercy heard his prayer, saw his tear, tears, and added on to him 15 more years. Uh, what, what did he do with those 15 years, though? That's the question. Verses 12 on to verse 17, or on to verse 19, now in the same chapter. At that time, Bardak Baldan, the son of Baldan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them, and shewed them all the house of his precious things, the silver, and the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, 
and all that was found in his treasuries. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah shewed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shewed them. Now, the Lord added 15 more years to King Hezekiah. And in those 15 years, okay, what did he do? We know the offspring, the son of Hezekiah, 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 excuse me, <laughs> beg your pardon, Manasseh reigned immediately after Hezekiah. And you ought to know about King Manasseh, okay, he really was a wicked man. Who eventually got right with the Lord. King Manasseh is in heaven. Yes, he is. I believe so. But King Manasseh was born during that 15 years given on uh, to Hezekiah from the Lord. And we see him boasting himself of his riches unto these people. Boasting himself, showing them everything. The difference between boasting yourself through the Lord, or glorying in the Lord for what he has done for you. There's a big difference. Glorying in what the Lord has done for you, rather than glorying in the Lord. See, that he had mercy upon you. See, Hezekiah, was a little bit too connected to these things of the world. Verse 16 to 19. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come, that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers had laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Fulfilled, looking at Daniel, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? And check out this answer that Hezekiah said. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. Good? And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? Now, some argue saying that King Hezekiah was being righteous there. It's like, hey, at least it'll be good and peaceful in my days. I beg to differ with that. So I rather think, and he said, it is good if peace and truth be in my days, you see. But before you start thinking, go to second, uh, before you start thinking that, um, Hezekiah is not in heaven. Go to 2 Chronicles now, chapter 32. 2 Chronicles chapter 32. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 24 under verse 26. 2 Chronicles 32, verses 24 under verse 26. In those days Hezekiah was sick, on, sick to death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. But Hezekiah rendered not according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Okay? They humbled themselves because of their pride. And the wrath came not there. But also look at verses 31 on to verse 32. Howbeit in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire, 
of the wonder that was done in the land. God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart, that he, Hezekiah, might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So during these 15 years, King Hezekiah didn't render unto the Lord the benefit done unto him. They humbled themselves, yes, but there was still a clinging of their pride left there, even though they humbled themselves and the Lord did not send his wrath upon them at that time during the life of Hezekiah. It was during the reign of King Manasseh, and King Manasseh was very evil. But see, the point that we looked at these things are at for is King Hezekiah, a godly, righteous king who is in heaven, he set his affections more so on this thing, on the things of these of this earth. Things of this earth. See, we have the church of the living God. We are eternally minded. Whereas those of you who are fake atheists, the grave awaits you, right? No, rather, dear friend, hell awaits you. Hell awaits you. You have everything to fear. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 23. For when ye were the servants of sin... You were free from righteousness. You're not saved. You're a servant of sin. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Our promise. A promise right there. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 2. 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Referring to right here, uh, that through death he, Lord Jesus Christ, might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Oh boy, right there. You got these lost people. These infiltrators, fakes, you, you atheists. Oh, I'm not afraid of death. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Especially when you see this as all there is. You don't want to leave this. You think you're going to find peace as worm food, right? No, 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 dear friend. No, dear friend. You're not saved of the church of the living God. You have everything to be afraid of. Yeah, yeah. Look at verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear of death. You're afraid of death. And if you're not saved, amen, you should be afraid. You should be afraid, absolutely. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 32. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 32. 
The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The fear of the wicked shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. As vinegar to the teeth, and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. Go to Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish, the fool has said in his heart there is no God, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt, and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Interesting about that, Satan said he was he's walking to and fro through the earth. Remember? Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? <laughs> Atheists. <laughs> uh, Atheists. Just trying to justify your sin. That's all you. That's all you are. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. How come we don't have what they have, Lord? What? <laughs> Keep reading. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me turning point in this psalm until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood I therein surely thou didst set them in slippery places thou castest them down into destruction how are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors oh 
you aren't saved, you will be. Especially when the church of the living God gets resurrected. You're scared right now. You're scared right now. Tough guy. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. <laughs> Tie that into the mark of the beast. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire but thee. Being eternally minded, heavenly minded. Look at that verse. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw nearer to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. 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 Go to Luke chapter 12 now. Luke chapter 12. You think this is it, huh? You think this is it? Your best life now, right? right you're going to die and be worm food, right? No. No different. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Luke chapter 12. Verses 13 on to verse 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Guess what? When you die, you're going to leave everything behind. Everything you're leaving behind, you're taking nothing with you. Hmm. For those of you who are not saved, one thing you are taking with you is your sin to hell. You have every right to be afraid, actually. You really do. Let's continue. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much, much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Your best life now, right? But God said unto him, Thou fool! This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. James chapter 5. James is also written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, it is. 
But see, we, the church of the living God, are eternally minded, seeking that which is in heaven, where our Lord Jesus Christ is. God our Father, you know, you, the atheist, the Jesuit, the coadjutor, the infiltrator, fake, with your religion of flesh. It's all about this down here to you. That's what it is to you. That's all it is to you. It's about this. James chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 12. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten. Now again, this is written for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Got to remember that. This is our, you know, instructing us in righteousness, you know. Let's continue. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Verse 3 right here gives us a very good proof that during the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver is not going to be worth anything during the time of Jacob's trouble. Very good proof right there. Let's continue. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. And right there, that's referencing the second coming. Okay. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until, it rece until he received the early and latter rain, future uh, restoration of Israel, the future acceptance of the Jew, of their Messiah, their King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth for the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercies having to endure to the end to be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, you and I, of the Church of the Living God, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, we don't have to endure to anything, to the end of anything, to be saved. We're sealed unto the day of redemption. During the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to endure to the end. Dispensational difference, see. But let's continue. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, Neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Everything of this world is going to go up like a puff. It's not going to mean anything during the time of Jacob's trouble. What do you have your affection set for? Things of this earth? Things of the world? Or the things that be of heaven. You have everything to be afraid of. Those of you who are lost. You have everything to be afraid of. And I don't envy your fear. I certainly do not envy your fear. Revelation chapter 20. Now... The judgment seat of Christ 
is where the church of the living God is going to be judged. Their rewards are going to be judged. You know, for our, our works, are, excuse me, our works are going to be judged for our rewards. Okay? We are secure. We are eternally secure in Christ Jesus. Okay? But once the church of the living God, the body of Christ be caught up, everything changes. And for those of you who are lost, those of you who are fake, knowingly serving Satan, Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. The thousand year millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Satan is going to be bound during that thousand year millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem, King of the Jews, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay? Satan is going to be bound. Okay? But it says here in verse 3, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, those who survive the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's us, the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Okay? But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Church of the living God. We're going to reign with him a thousand years. Our millennial inheritance is what we're working for. Our rewards during the millennial kingdom. See, let's continue. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil, now, oh, by the way, here's the Trinity. And the devil that deceiveth, that deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, the lake of fire. Uh, look at verse 10. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your trinity, you Trinitarians. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> and right here for you. You Christ-denying atheist. You wicked, unrepentant Jesuits, coadjutors, fakes, infiltrators. 
Pay attention. Because this is what you have coming. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no place for them. And there was found no place for them. Excuse me. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in which were written in the books, according to their works. See, our works are going to be tried for our rewards. Right here, the great white throne, your works are going to be tried for your salvation. And how does that end up? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Not looking too good. Not looking too good for you at the great white throne of judgment. Not looking too good at all, actually. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell. Look at that. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. In hell, it's burning. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. In hell, you're going to be burning forever and ever and ever. But see, right here, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The lake of fire. See, here's the thing. You're not saved. You're fake. Fire awaits you. The lake of fire. And it don't matter if you believe that or not. If you make it through this, up to this point and hear this, and you die not saved of the church of the living God, you're going to be reminded that you were warned You have every, every reason to be afraid, dear friend. Why don't you humble yourself? Seek the Lord. Get saved before it is too late. Because it's not looking too good for you, my friend. And you have every reason to be afraid. Those who knew you have every reason to mourn for you. Because you're in hell. That's why the sorrow of death, the sting of death, is so much greater for those who are not saved, obviously. Especially when you are saved. And one of your loved ones died, not saved, and are in hell right now. There's nothing that can be done about it. Now, go to Luke chapter 16. Our final thing that we're going to look at. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 19, on to verse 31. There was a certain rich man 
which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, where the saints before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ went and waited until our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood to make atonement for sin. Okay? Abraham's bosom. But let's continue. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell... He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. You're not going out of hell. You're not going to burn up and die. It's not this, what is that, soul annihilationism or whatever? No, 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 no. Read Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verses what? Uh, 40 on the board, 46 somewhere. The latter parts of uh, Mark chapter 9, where our Lord talks about hell and the condition of hell. You're not getting out of it. There's no escape for you. And you guys call us crazy ones. Then he said, I pray thee for I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to the, into this place of torment. A place of torment. It don't matter if you believe in heaven or hell. You lost atheistic twit. You Jesuit, you coadjutor. You guys at least know. But for you, the atheist, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. And you keep that hard heart of yours and rejecting the Lord, resisting the Holy Ghost, you'll see. And by that time, it's way too late for you. Yeah, you have everything to be afraid of. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. That's what that's what is awaiting you apart from salvation, which is in Christ Jesus. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. There it is. And there it is.
you and I, brother, sister, again, losing a loved one, a brother, a sister of the Church of the Living God, we will miss, we will miss them on, down here on earth. We will miss the fellowship, the company, the contact. Yes, we will miss that, and we will mourn for that, but we know that they are far better off than we are. We know that, the bitter sweetness of it. We know that we will see them again, but not yet. Not yet. And we are to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice, remember. They are uh, those who die who are in Christ are far better off than we who are in Christ still down here, especially now with what's coming. It's almost here. But those of you who are lost, your best life now, perverting the doctrines of Christ, tough guy. You have everything to be afraid of. Because hell awaits you. Hell awaits you. <laughs> so, we're all going to die. You're going to die. I'm going to die. Where are you going to go when you die? Where are you going to go? Are you saved? You better make sure. If you're lost, you get your neck stiff. You, you put yourself there. Not our Lord. Because our Lord has provided a way out. But you won't take it. You want this world, right? You want all the stuff, right? You want the praises of men, right? You ain't taking none of it with you. What are you going to do, dear friend? See, we, the Church of the Living God, we don't fear death. Oh, we might have reservations about some of the pain we might go through, but <laughs> um, with those of us who kind of have that reservation, um, remember what God manifests in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Nails to his hands and feet. His visage was so marred, you couldn't even, couldn't even recognize a man on the cross. Naked. Bloodied. For you. And for me. And what we have, whatever pain we feel before we die. You know. So, now, granted, some of these Jesuits can prolong it pretty good because that's what these infiltrating scumbags are good at. Yes. But um, it's only so far they can go. But you who are lost. The fear of the pain of death and also the fear of death itself. And I say this to you with charity, dear friend. I pity you. I truly do pity you. Because while the Lord is here, available, you know, the church of the living God, you know, while um, he who now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way, you know, um, while his salvation is here, for you. And he has called every single one of you. And you reject it. You're going to get what you deserve. And what you deserve is hell. God help you. 
But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, <laughs> ah, never mind, never mind. Um, got some other videos coming here in the future. Um, a brother sent me uh, a few verses of scripture that was really, really good. Still working on that one, brother. You know who you are if you watch this. Thank you so much to all of you. I love you. We love you. And um, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you so much for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.